Hey guys, Eli with Dixie Chopper, and today I have a very special guest who needs no introduction, Dixie Chopper founder, Art Evans. Art built the very first Dixie Chopper over 40 years ago, and the brand continues today with some of the same core principles and unique designs. For example, Dixie Chopper pioneered the use of the pump and wheel motor drive system in the zero turn industry, and we're still the only manufacturer to use a T-Gearbox. But what the heck is a T-Gearbox? Well, I'm gonna let Art tell you the history of the T-Box and why it's still relevant today. Back in the day, in 1980, when we started this, uh, this transmission frame had a number seven Eaton on here, and there was a plate set here, and a plate set there, and that was necessary because you had chains that went down to the rear wheels, and you, you, that's, you know, the chain has to run straight. So we started out with a T gearbox, <coughs> and then uh, uh, the chain drive, and that proved to be uh, a high maintenance for commercial guys, they had to adjust the chains ever uh, 80 hours or so, and the chains were only good for about 175. <clears throat> but so uh, we were searching for a way to do it hydraulically. So the next move we made, the first one had number seven Eaton here, number seven Eaton there, and a T gearbox with couplers. So then the first hydraulic machine we built. We had a number 11 pump here. It was half of a number 11 hydrostat. It was just a pump section <coughs> set here, uh, set here. And then we had a owning engine, horizontal shaft, <coughs> horizontal shaft owning, driving these two pumps with a belt and an idler. I call that a triangle drive for, for the purposes of this conversation. <coughs> so uh, then we had uh, hydraulic lines down to a conventional wheel motor. Well, that was a good machine. That was our first 60-inch machine. And, and that particular unit <coughs> didn't have a T-box. So uh, then about that time, uh, uh, Hydrogear came through the door with a, with a new Japanese pump that they were importing. And uh, the first question I asked them was, <coughs> can I triangle drive this pump? At, like we were doing with the number 11 Eaton's and, and they said absolutely not positively not no but hell no so I said okay we'll make us a bell housing and and uh, drive them with a tee box uh, like we were doing with the number seven Eaton's and they said that'd be okay there won't be no side load on the input shaft so that's what we did made a bell housing for the number 10 uh, uh, Japanese pump and then it uh, wasn't too long after that, the, the T gearbox, we started having, you know, when the T gearboxes would get, you know, 500 to 1,000 hours on them, they started to have bottom bearing failure. So we, we stretched the down shaft here and put, and put an extra bearing in there, and that eliminated that problem forever, and it, we st it's still that way today. About that time, uh, a couple of our competitors came out with, with machines with the uh, hydro gear pump in them, and they were triangle driving like we did the uh, number 11 Eaton's. And uh, uh, I believe the two examples that I remember, both companies built about 500 machines and, and, uh, and, that, and, and they experienced 100% failure within the first uh, 100 hours. And so when when Hydrogear came back, I asked him, I said, well, well, how did they get application approval to triangle drive that? You told me I couldn't do it. And they said, well, we told them they couldn't do it, but they did it anyway. Well, anyway, as a result of that, they raised so much hell that Hydrogear changed their pump. They, they put a more robust bearing in the face of the pump. Well, uh, I, was, I was in a wait and see mode. Uh, I wanted to see if it worked, A. And B, you know, if, if we're not side loading, no side load is better than some side load. So we're just driving this pump uh, uh, straight through with a, with a spline shaft. And it doesn't put any side load on the pump because the face of the pump, the face of the pump here has a bearing in it. The other end of this shaft is over here and it's just a bushing. So I figured no side loads better than some side load, so let's just keep doing that. Because we were trying to build a machine that uh, didn't break when you use it, that 
would last for many, many years. And when I drive around Indianapolis today, about 50% of the machines I see are probably 20, 30 years old still out there working. So I figured that wasn't too bad a, a decision. The other thing has to do with the reservoir. The purpose of a reservoir is, is to provide some place for the oil to go settle down because it's been, it, it's been severely excited. You know, it, it ain't a matter of shaking it up in a bottle. It's been compressed to 2,000 PSI, squirted through two or three 31 thousandths orifices, gone through a set of rollers, and believe me, it shook up. So when it goes back to that reservoir, it, it, it needs some place to go cool off, you know, and, and having a nice, having a nice uh, uh, plate in there to scrub the air out is a good thing. The design of a reservoir is kind of a, a, uh, engineer, a, a good engineering uh, exercise. Uh, we started out with a gallon and a half, and one of the mistakes we made, we, we put the filter on the suction side of the pump. And even though HydroGear tightened up their, their tolerances on their charge pump, it was still susceptible to air lock. And, and, and a filter is kind of a scrubber. When that oil is being sucked through that filter, them air molecules uh, uh, attach themselves to the surface of the filter. And, uh, and every now and then it'll burp. When it burps, when it burps, and you shut the engine off at the wrong time, ever once we were still having airlock problems, see? So, uh, and back in that era, there was no such thing as drilled poppets or cross-drilled dump valves. When you, when you fired up a system, the oil went into the high pressure loop and uh, it was there forever. It, it might take 50 hours before the machine would firm up and drive right. <laughs> Because the only way that air could get out was to escape through the through leakage in the wheel motor, because it was trapped in there forever. And uh, so then uh, a couple of years went by, and 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 I, I'm assuming that uh, there was an improvement in, in efficiency in the wheel motor because we started getting complaints about jerky levers. Well, the first cure for that was was to uh, put a cross drill dump valve in it. 31,000 surface, let it leak A to B, high to low, and that, soft, and that leakage would soften up the, the levers and make up for the efficiency gain in the, in the wheel motor, because when they're talking about efficiency, they're talking about leakage. You know, it's 40, 85% efficient. That means it's got 15% leakage. So when they tightened that up, it caused problems. So then, uh, but still, the only way to get that air out of there was to run the machine, and, uh, uh, and we were running every machine on a treadmill until the next one come off. So <clears throat> the next thing that happened was that somebody got the bright idea, I think it was Tom Copel uh, at Hydrogear, that instead of putting a bleed orifice in the dump valve, let's put the bleed orifice in the poppet. Well, that was a big deal. Because now you got a bleed orifice in the high pressure and you got a bleed orifice in the low pressure, and no matter which direction you're going, you're peeing off oil through a 31,000th orifice. And guess what's adjacent? To, and, and, and that oil is going back into the, into the uh, inlet port of the charge pump. And guess what's right beside of it? A 31,000th orifice into the case, and so that oil is escaping out of the loop, whether it be high pressure or low pressure, into the case. The case is returning the oil, and in our case, we were running in in a quad loop back to the wheel motor to cool it, because that's the hot spot, and back to tank. Well, instead of taking 50 hours to get the air out of the system, now you can get the air out of the system in two minutes. And so the, the system purges itself with air, so now the only thing you gotta deal with is the reservoir, and the reservoir uh, has got a plate in here, and, and that's a scrubber. If you take a milkshake, and you see this table's got a little slope on it here. If I took a milkshake and I poured it on this table, and it run down this trough, you'd get milk off the other end. Well, the same thing happens with, with aerated oil. 
So this flat plate in here is designed so when you're jostling back and forth across the, the yard, the oils are sloshing back and forth across there, scrubbing the air off out of that oil. And, 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 a, and air doesn't have any lubricity. You know, it, air doesn't keep metal to metal from uh, scoring itself. Uh, so the, the pumps want good, solid, non-aerated oil. So we're sucking out of the bottom and we're trying to scrub off the top. And now today's machine has got a big advancement in, in that they're putting, the, they're putting the filter on the return side. So in all those years, all the pump failures that we had, I never saw a pump that was failed because of dirt. It was always starvation. And so you want to let the pump have all the good, clean, solid, non-aerated oil you can get to it. And then after it's all aerated and gone through the, the system of propelling the vehicle, you take the return oil that pees off out of these two bleed ports and you come back through the filter and the filter, uh, just like the one on the suction side, is a scrubber. And that air will accumulate on the, on the, uh, the filter paper. And then every now and then it burps, but when it burps, it goes back to the reservoir, and the reservoir has got a plate in there to deal with it. So uh, today's system uh, has a properly designed reservoir, and and uh, we're returning we're returning through a filter. You got a magnetic drain plug, and uh, from a longevity standpoint, uh, the design, you know we're talking 40 years of of, of, of tweaking and changes. But today's system uh, it has got to be about as foolproof as it gets. This machine needs to go out there and run 20, 30, 40 years. You know, those machines that I see in Indianapolis that were built in 2000, 2005 area, they're going to still be out there mowing grass when I'm gone. You know, I'm 79 years old. I started this project when I was 38. So, uh, obviously, as time goes by, you learn things, you get smarter. And, and we've tried to apply everything that we know and have learned over 40 years into this vehicle. Well, the reason that the T-Box is relevant today is, you know, it's, it's internally splined. This is a wet joint. You got a robust bearing here. You got uh, a Viton seals for the heat. Uh, and they've also, uh, got its own little expansion tank over here, so this thing stays 100% uh, 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 full of oil. There's no air in there. Uh, the other thing they're doing, they got a fan over the top of this. You see, a reservoir is like a wood stove. Heat is your big problem when you're, when you're doing work with hydraulics. You have to control the heat. So that fan takes about 40 degrees out of the, out of the system, and that fan's blowing on, blowing on your... Uh, a reservoir just like it is on the, the pumps and the gearbox. The purpose of the T gearbox is to eliminate the side load, which increases longevity, minimizes downtime, and, and, and you got to realize here, you know, we set out to build a, a design a system that run 5,000 hours. That was our that was our baseline, you know, and and, and and we tried for 30, 40 years to achieve that. We we kept making improvements, trying to get to 5,000 hours, you know, and we were trying to build. Performance without compromise. Performance is everything. That's going fast, living a long time, timeless value, plain and simple. The T gearbox is just one of many components exclusive to Dixie Chopper and what makes our mowers stronger and last longer than the competition. So for more information on any of our products and to find a dealer near you, visit DixieChopper.com. You know, we've been told many, many times that it don't need to be that good. But my answer was always, well, it's a Dixie Chopper, it needs to be that good. Because this thing needs to be around when the Martians land. <laughs>